There's something strange about aging. Cleopatra, born in Macedonia, Greece, was a pharaoh of Egypt. Considered a goddess, she was said to be incredibly smart, speaking several languages and learned how to read hieroglyphics. Apart from languages, she studied geography, history, astronomy, mathematics, etc., trying to gain all knowledge existing. Intelligence wasn't her only weapon. She was also considered the most beautiful woman in history, while well, what was considered beauty at that time. Preserving that great beauty required great effort. It is said that she took milk baths to preserve that vitality and beauty of her skin. Why milk? Milk contains minerals, vitamins, essential fatty acids, and bioactive enzymes that keeps the skin looking healthy, preventing wrinkles. People would wash their face with it. It would have to be raw milk, not pasteurized. Today, there's still a hunt for the fountain of youth. There's urotherapy, originating from Indian culture where women are told to massage their face with cow urine. We have women that claims that it's a wonder cure for skin problems, treating acne and wrinkles. There's also neck tape. All you do is tape the neck skin to your nape. I'm guessing it takes a few years off. Somehow. I guess duct tape does fix everything. There's also face lap. All you do is cough up $350 to a health practitioner and she will perform a technique where she apparently slaps years off your face. It's a 15 minute session. It supposedly improves circulation and brings in a healthy flush if you're into that kind of stuff. If you also want to give your $350 a healthy flush down the toilet, it's up to you. You also have Steve Ludwin. I've been practicing self-immunization for close to 25 years now, which is the practice of using small amounts of snake venom in order to build up an immunity. The first time I decided to do it was, you know, it was really scary, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. I don't have a, a medical background. This guy has injected snake venom for the past 28 years. He injects it weekly and claims it has re-energized him as he hasn't suffered from a cold or a flu. Now people have taken things a step further. There's billionaires buying blood from teens to slow down the aging process. As we get older, our cells accumulate damage and become what's called senescent. It's a phenomenon by which normal cells cease to divide. It's a defensive mechanism. Cells that collect too much damage are at greater risk to become cancerous and multiply rapidly. So now they have this procedure called parabiosis. It involves a transfusion of blood plasma from young donors. The blood of young organisms are rich in protein that improve cell function and stimulates the production of these proteins in the recipient's body. Seems like we have vampires roaming the streets of the underworld. People also have surgeries, where the surgeon removes excess fat through an incision in the natural crease of the upper eyelid or inside the lower lid to remove bags. You also have lotion, you have makeup. People spend an enormous amount of money in desperation searching for the fountain of youth. Well, that may sound normal to you guys, but to me, there's something strange about aging. We have something that has been kept in the dark for so long and now has been brought out to light slowly. People are afraid of it with the very whisper of its name, fasting. This is a evidence based on science world, so here we go with the studies again. Biochemist Walter Longo. This seems like it has, I mean, implications for uh, human aging because, you know, if you're, if you're talking about humans as we age, we, um, something occurs called immunosenescence where we start to lose some of our, you know, we don't, we don't make as many um, lymphocytes actually, it's the lymphoid population that decreases with age. Um, and so if you're able to then be able to um, activate these hematopoietic stem cells to regenerate, you know, the, the blood cell population, that seems like it would have implications for aging. Uh, the fasting just tells the body, I need you to kill all the cells, and then the refeeding gives the message, I need, to, I need you to rebuild all mm -hmm. the systems. 
conducted clinical trials showing that cycles of a five-day fasting mimicking diet can reduce risk factors of life-threatening disease. He stated that a periodic fasting mimicking diet has clinically demonstrated remarkable beneficial effects in aging and disease risk factors. Fasting mimicking diet is a protocol that has the ability to do everything from improve cognition to manage diabetes. Depriving yourself from food in order to take advantage of the health benefits like reducing inflammation and fat burning. Of course, it's not what you don't eat that you should only be concerned about. It's also what you do eat. People have this notion of trying to be healthy so they go on a fast hearing all the benefits then go right back to eating junk again it doesn't work that way you must eat clean light food staying away from carbs and sugar that stuff will keep your body infested with disease and eventually kill you you also have hit high intensity interval training is a short intense burst of physical activity paired with the interval of quick rest it can slow down the aging process it reduces telomere shortening you see inside our cells we have a nucleus the cell contains chromosomes and those chromosomes has our DNA in it. At the end of each DNA, we have a telomere that aids in protection of the DNA. Think of it as an um, aglet, a small sheath on the tip of shoelaces to protect the fiber. Telomeres keeps our DNA from denaturing. Every time our cells divide, the telomere shortens. It shortens until eventually you die of old age. Hit slows the process down. We weren't meant to eat all day and we weren't meant to live a sedentary life. We used to go days without food and be chased by animals. I don't think we ran or jogged from them. We, we sprinted. See, to me, we are all born perfect. Society programs us into thinking we are not perfect. Anorexic looking models, movie stars and musicians doing master cleanse to look perfect for the cameras. These are the people they say we should look like in order to be accepted as beauty. Our perceptions of ourselves is shaped by television. That's when we begin to have these false ideas of beauty. We are told how we should dress by the latest fashions. We need to be tanned to be beautiful. Kids are bullied if they don't have Jordans on. There's only one race, that's human race. Black, white, brown, you're all beautiful. And beautiful is something kids should be raised hearing repeatedly every single day of their lives. Taking the right steps to take care of ourselves the proper way. It's something we should take serious. Something we should all pass down to our sons and daughters. Before we lose ourselves and beauty will be something we look for but never find. As for me, I'd rather do things how nature intended us to do. That's a, that's a journey I'm willing to take. Nothing strange about that.